Hello, I'm Malcolm Hazlitt. And I'm Janice Baker. What are radio seeds and who are seeds of affinity? And what happens when a young man is seduced by an older woman? Ooh, next, next on, on our, our time. time. Janice, how <laughs> lovely to see you again. It's been so long. It has. All of a few days. <laughs> uh, we have a very special guest in this episode, or we've got a couple of very special guests. We do, as always. Because we're talking about a stage play of The Graduate, the old movie that comes That's why from you're the talking 1960s. About, yes, yes, the younger man being seduced by the older woman. Which has woman. been turned into a sort of a comedy script, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. But first, mm -hmm. we have a very special guest with a really interesting story. So welcome to Heather Anderson. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Heather, you're, uh, just explain who you are here at the University of South Australia. OK, I'm a senior lecturer in journalism, but my research areas are around community radio and also prison radio. Prison radio. And mm. who ever thought there would be such a thing? Yeah. Now, you see, when we first see, No, talk... but when you think prison radio, so is that radio in the prison or it's... Well, that's what I thought. Well, yeah. Well, you would. You would. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not, not right, is it? It's, well, it's both. So there's, there are prison radio stations inside prisons. I hear that Orange is the New Black, the new s series, features a very dodgy radio station. Oh. There's, um, there's a great uh, service that's been happening in the UK for about 10 years that is purely inside um, radio station, uh, prisons all across the UK with radio produced oh, inside prison. Idea. Yeah, Ear Hustle, which is coming out of the San Quentin Prison Media Centre, is getting massive reviews as a podcast. Uh, and we also have some prison radio in Australia as well. But then there's also a lot of prisoner radio, which is happening outside on, on community radio stations almost exclusively and usually featuring uh, people who are of lived prison experience who've got out and want to get involved in that, that kind of activity. But, but how did you get involved then? You're a lecturer... lecturer in journalism, and yeah. yet you're involved in this. How yeah. did that come about, Heather? Well, I've been a community broadcaster for a lot longer than oh. I've been an academic, so pretty much since I was 18, I got involved in a community radio station in Brisbane called 4 Z. Yeah. And, um, and they had a prison radio show. They also had a, a lot of programming around social justice issues, and I was friends with someone who was a, a community centre prison advocate um, did a fair bit of advocacy work and, you know, if I wanted to hang out with her, we'd have to get her work done so that we could go and, you know, mm. do stuff. Mm. And I was working with her one night and said to her, why are you so passionate about this? And, and she said that, you know, anyone can end up in jail. It only takes one stupid mistake or um, even just the life that you're born into, that, you know... With circumstances. Yeah, it, 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 can, it can happen to anyone or mm. it can happen to anyone's children or family. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, you can't not care about it. You can't wait until you're in that situation to mm. care about mm. it. Yeah. I guess an old way of thinking is that if people are put into prison, they should be locked away and no TV, no radio, no privileges. Mm. But the reality is... The thinking has changed dramatically, hasn't it? It's about rehabilitation more than punishment. Yeah, and I think that that's something that people, the, the general public, don't think about. Like, what is the purpose of, of prison? Like, why does someone get sentenced to prison? And a lot of the time, that's, again, circumstance. One person can end up being paying a fine, and if you can't afford to pay the fine for doing exactly the same thing, you end up in jail. So it, mm. I think that... It's, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of thought around actually, you know, <coughs> why, why do we send people to jail and what's the purpose of that, yeah. Mm. So, Heather, here's a shot of uh, one of the radio stations. Yeah, yeah, so this is Wow FM out at Semaphore. It's a community radio station. And it's where um, Radio Seeds broadcasts on the first Friday of every month. So this is part of, you know, a few people from the Radio Seeds team. And... Um, Broadcasting? Yeah, doing the um, Leave doing no the show. woman behind, is that what that says? Yeah, yes. leave no woman behind. Right. So that's because this is specifically for women at the moment. This this particular project is, mm -hmm. yeah, Radio Seeds is 
a women's program. It's, uh, it's produced by women from Seeds of Affinity, which is a grassroots organisation that's based in Semaphore. They're um, made up of women of lived experience for women of lived experience. So with Radio Seeds, my role, along with another academic, Charlotte Bedford, who's from the University of Adelaide, um, we play a supporting role there. So we do provide provide training and work with those women to get them on air doing their show once a month. Usually how many are there in uh, the group or does it vary? There's a, there, there's a core of about five women who are always involved yeah. uh, and then we have people come in and out. We always invite anyone who's, who's at, at, um, at Seeds on the day, we invite them to come along and so have people come come through, but there's a, a core of five women. Yeah. And what does the programming consist of? What yeah. are they working on? Yeah. So there's two main aims of the radio show. One is to inform the wider community about the issues that are faced by women when they get out of prison, mm. um, and when they're going through that process of starting a new life, and then also speaking to those women and women inside of prison about the possibilities and um, as well as the struggles. So there's a, the, there's a mixture of topics. Uh, we also go into the Adelaide Women's Prison about every six weeks and talk to women there. And um, they opened a new unit earlier in the year and we've been reporting from there every six weeks about what life in prison's like and you know what their concerns are, what their hopes, their dreams. Is yeah. there a common thread that comes through the conversations? Um, survival, strength and and sisterhood, really. There's um, the I think that one of the one of the strengths of Seeds of Affinity uh, as an organization is the, um, the way that those women work together to support each other and to also support women of lived prison experience. And I think that that really comes out mm. in the show. Mm. Um, a determination <clears throat> and also a real, a real desire to share what they've learnt with other people to try and make other people's journeys a little bit easier. It's difficult for me to speak on behalf of those women, sure. uh, but that that's what what I see. When um when we first got involved with Seeds of Affinity, that was um with a little bit of support of University of South Australia, went to um to visit the organisation and said, look, you know, there's there's this history of prison radio around the world, and we shared a few different examples and said, well, we, um. Both Charlotte and I had ended up in Adelaide from other places and were like, you know, we'd really like to do something here and we thought that your organisation might be interested. And the women there, straight away, they, they got it. And, the, and within an hour, it was like, yeah, this is what we should do and we should focus on the theme of what I know now that I wish I'd known then. Mm. And, um, and that was it. We just started working with them. We ran a series of training um, workshops to create a series of broadcasts that spoke to that story of you know you know what I know now, and um, that went so well. And Wow FM was just around the corner, and they were happy to to give us an hour to showcase these broadcasts. Um, ABC TV got interested, and they ran a story that ended up being a national um, some national coverage, and it just ended up being. Such, More than you expected. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing um, community radio projects, trying to work, um, trying to find ways of, of working with people whose voices aren't usually heard yeah. and giving them skills to tell their stories mm. and, to, and for them to speak in their own voice. Sure. <clears throat> and for about 25 years, and this was you know, the best thing that I had <laughs> ever done. So, and continued to do. Yeah, and that was a year and a half ago. And so wow. we've been doing the monthly radio show since oh, okay. then. Yeah. Is there a men's equivalent? Not at the moment, no. There's, um, there are, um, there are, there's a shout-out program on 3D radio in Adelaide and there's similar programs 
um, across the country that cover men and women. Um, men's content tends to dominate the 3D program just because there are so many more male prisoners than, than female prisoners, oh, okay. like just as a demographic. Yeah. So, um, but no, this is um, this is the only. As far as I know, this is the only program of its kind in the country. Mm. Yeah. But I have also done some work in the men's prison at Mobilong with Charlotte again. Uh, and that was, um, you can see the images, was creating a CD that was um, that's for new arrivals. So it's like an induction CD, mm. but rather than the formal information, it's from the point of view of the men. Yes. Mm. Um, they didn't really like the idea of what do you know now that you wish you'd known then. I think they kind of couldn't get their head around and not yeah. knowing Expressing, stuff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but when, then we rephrased it to them as, uh, so your best mate's arrived at Mobilong and he's never been here before, what what does he need uh -huh. to know? Yeah. And then, yeah, they ran with that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, produced a whole lot of audio. But the idea is that when you first get to Mobilong, you can listen to that and you can get a little bit of behind the scenes from the men. Mm. And that was great because it really, um, as well as some skills... I think that it, it's a, it's really important to be able to to be able to tell your your own story. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But also, from the point of view of the inmates, it must be a huge culture shock to you know suddenly have to obey the rules to be where you've got to be to eat at a particular mm. time to do mm. all the things you know that they've got to do. Mm. Um, it just must be frightening. Absolutely. Well, the prison staff have said that they like these projects because. Um, a busy prisoner is, is a happy prisoner and a happy prisoner mm. is a happy prison. Sure. Yeah. Heather, sure, sure. Look, it, obviously we could keep talking about this and what would be really interesting at a later date is perhaps to talk to some of the people that have been involved with this. Yeah, well, that would be great. And I'd love well, to let's organise that for yes. the future yeah. <laughs> and we'll be back in a moment to find out about the leg. The leg? The leg. Mm -hmm. To you, Mrs. Robinson. It's you Mrs. know that Baker? song? No, no. <laughs> no, the song from The Graduate yes, that everybody recognises when I you sing the song. Love The Graduate. Mrs. Robinson. Yes. And there's an interesting story about that that Matt Byrne, who is our special guest, <laughs> will tell us all about. Thank you. But Hello, Matt. Hi, Matthew. Hello. Welcome. Great to see but you. First of all, let's talk about the leg. The leg, not the alleged leg. This is the real leg. A real leg. When we see, when we think of The Graduate, which launched Dustin Hoffman as a star, and Anne Bancroft, of course, already was a big star. There was a very famous iconic shot taken for the poster that's been used to, was used to promote the film back in 67 and has been used when they've done stage shows of it. Now, if you look closely at this gorgeous leg in the, in the image, the model, it's not Anne Bancroft's leg, the model who did it, did it for 50 bucks. She was a leg model, quote, unquote. <laughs> and so she actually was paid $50 for the most iconic Jeez, image of the great... bit like when Paul McCartney recorded Mull of Kintyre. You know the, the band that he had, the yes, pipe, band? pipe band? Gave him 150 quid, apparently. Oh, no! And when it became a worldwide number one hit, they said, well, we'd like a bit more money. He said, a deal's a deal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a, he knew how a the value of a penny... A contract, The value yes. of a penny did, Paul. But... Um, <laughs> I wonder what was wrong with Anne Bancroft's legs. Then, oh, why absolutely they had... nothing. No. <laughs> they pro like, no. They, she probably asked for 75. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matthew, um, the other story is uh, with this particular show, uh, we may as well sort of knock over straight away. That song yeah. wasn't written for that film, was well, it? Well, they, they wrote an album called Bookends and the music from that was used for The Graduate. But Mike Nichols, who's one of those rare people who was nominated for Best Director and won for The Graduate, but the movie wasn't nominated, you know, they didn't win anything else. It, it wasn't nominated for Best Picture in those days. If you nominate for Best Director, the movie generally. Yeah, yeah. so where were we? Um, we're so just talking about... The music. The, the music. So the music. they had written this song. He wasn't quite happy with all the music for the film. So he said, have you got another song? And well, we've got this song called Here's to You, Mrs. Roosevelt, as in the president's wife. And he said, could you make that Mrs. Robinson? And they said, of course we could. Why and not? they did. So and he is. absolutely fell in love with it. And so did the whole world. So yes. when you now think of um, The Graduate and you think of that iconic music, 
it's so closely connected because they knew what they were writing about. And there's certain songs like that, like Alfie with Bert mm. Bacharach. He knew he'd seen the film, but the song hadn't been written. That's why Alfie, the song, fits the movie so well. Well, it's the same with Here's to You, Mrs. Robinson. Mm. And heaven holds a place for those who pray. Yes. And uh, it, there is just so so much iconic stuff connected to that film. It just summed up a generation it in America. It did, and I guess mm. that's our generation. So mm. how did that become a play? Well, um, after you know being six, so there's a lot of adaptation going back and forth between films and musicals and plays. There is. And a number of years ago, they just decided it was time. Uh, Terry Johnson, um, who's done a lot of adap adaptations, um, he decided that he would adapt it, got permission, and it was just an enormous success. Kathleen Turner played Mrs. Robinson in London, and we had Jerry Hall, who came here oh, and right. toured, toured in Eric's right. yeah. yeah. Tour to, I think, Sydney and Melbourne, but Didn't of course, it to Adelaide. came to Adelaide. Mm. Adelaide would miss out again, but no, it hasn't missed out. Because um, you're doing it. Well, I kept an eye on the rights, and you have to do that sometimes. You've got to pursue a show, and sometimes mm. it's very elusive, and sometimes you find it. And that's how it works, mm. Matthew? Yeah, you, you know, you, you do see stuff. But you want to know about a show before everyone else knows about it. So you can do research and find shows that you didn't know. Like years ago, I was watching a movie, um, the movie A Few Good Men, and saw it at the end based on a play by Aaron Sorkin, and I investigated, and yes, indeed Found it was. Original. And so I managed to do A Few Good Men because of that. So I always keep a very close eye when I'm watching films if they've got a great dramatic quality that could be done on stage, just to see if they, they have yeah. been on stage. You, you had a really interesting question to ask Matthew. Now you look at me you like, what was it. that? Hit me with it, baby, one yeah. more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Malcolm. Well, it, <laughs> what was I going to well, say? Well, basically, why do you pick the pieces that oh, you that's pick? That's right, that was Sorry. my question. Janice, you had a question to ask <laughs> Why Matthew. do you pick? Nobody's really answered that now. Well, sort of a little bit. No, but, but why do you pick it? That's well, probably... I, Look, I was born well, in 1950. Sorry, the timing. Yeah, well, I was born in 1958, is... and I grew up through this You're era. That from old. The, yes, from, I'm 60 now, Malcolm. Believe yes. it or not, it's legal. Um, What's it like I can get to a be seniors that card? Age, yes, I know. That's the best thing about <laughs> yes, I can't get wait. Free bus ride. Get a seniors card. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is, I grew up at that time, and to me, I look back at my life and I see movies like The Graduate that were a big part of that. That was part of that culture that I grew up in, and where. Uh, you know, Hopefully. it had a well. It had a wonderful. No, well, I haven't grown up. My first child, so it's far too That's enjoyable not where to I was have going. a second. Hopefully, one. with the storyline. <laughs> yeah. When you're a teenager. No, but it's um, it it just to me had um, it was witty and clever and a bit different. If you remember the film, it was a little surreal. It wasn't mm. totally realistic, mm. and so um, I thought, well, I wonder how the play is, how they've adapted it. And you know, the script could have been written yesterday. It is so clever and yes, funny and cutting. Young Benjamin Braddock, he finishes university in California. He comes out, what does he want to do? Nothing. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. This could be a young Matt Byrne in 1978 graduating and from Flinders And we've got a picture Uni. of the boy who's playing yeah. the role. Yes, Nathan Quadrio, a wonderful young man, great actor. He's got his own company, I Skip Productions now as well. Um, but Do he we is, have him? yeah, he is, uh, he is our graduate. Mm. So he's wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, and you know, ready for anything in the world. What he's not ready for is meeting Mrs. Robinson, who looks like this. Well, yes, indeed, <laughs> and she, she um, she'll even look different. Um, we've tried different looks. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there'll be more cocktail dresses and all that sort of thing. That is Nikki Martin, who's playing Mrs. Robinson, and so he meets her. She's alcoholic. She's sexless, she's just everything about her has just gone to hell in a handcart. They've had to move out to the west coast because of um, you know, the husband's job and so she's just got nothing. You know, the, the relationship is dead and she meets this young man and she decides she, I'll be the original cougar and mm. uh, she decides that she wants him See, and that's, that's it. Now that's interesting that you can use that expression, isn't it? Yeah. The original well, cougar. It, yeah, yeah, well she, she really was and so, you know, they start this relationship and it's hilarious because, you know, she wants in a hotel. He wants to book into a hotel room, but then he's embarrassed and the use of the name Smith, you know, all the cliches <laughs> are there. Yes. The hotel clerk's actually a wonderful part, a great part with this guy knowing what's going on and uh, everything. But the one rule she has is don't date my daughter. 
because the parents, the Braddocks and the Robinsons, are good friends and they think their kids may hook up. Uh -huh. And so the husband, played by me, Mr Robinson, finds that he thinks that it would be great for Benjamin to quote unquote sow some wild oats. And you can meet my daughter too, but not like that. Yes. You know, of course, of course, you know. Yeah, Matthew, that's <laughs> interesting though that you say you're playing a role in the show and you're also directing it. Well, I was going to be the hotel clerk, but uh, we had a slight change of direction, and uh, I'm playing uh, Mr. Robinson. And how hard is that, directing the show and being in the show? Because let's just go backwards for a step, because the director's job is to obviously have usually a preconceived idea as to how the whole piece should come together, whether yeah. it be on stage or film. And then you're basically watching the actors trying to connect everybody Absolutely. and move people. That it's interesting. They're not just standing there talking to themselves. Well, a bit like that Malcolm Hazlitt bloke that I know. <laughs> He's managed to direct it's a few a, shows and be in them. <laughs> and no, um, your take, Matthew. Inspired by him and people like him who are clever enough to do both, I've tried to put myself, like when I did 12 Angry Men, I played juror number three, which is a pretty tough gig, but because I was in the room with the guys, I was able to manipulate them, if you like that word, and move mm. them around, and it seemed to work okay. And he's got three main scenes, and it's quite a long play, so, you know, I do my bit here and there, but the rest of the time I'll be out the front, and uh, sometimes I get someone to sit in for me when I'm doing stuff, but I find my actors don't worry about that. Some actors do, but they, mm. they, they understand that I'll turn up on stage well, at some needs, stage. Well, a cast yeah. needs to become a unit. Yeah, it needs yeah. to become a family. It's a team and, um, you know, whether I, I'm out the front, I don't try and bark orders or instructions, I get them to realise. I, I always say to people, I understand that you want to know your moves and your dialogue when you come on and act. Noel Cowd said, learn your lines and avoid the furniture. Yes. But there's another more important thing, is to know why you're on stage. Exactly. What you are doing in this scene. Yeah. When you walk through that door, why are you there? If you know that, the rest just falls into place and the, the audience are a lot more comfortable watching an actor who's thinking for themselves and not just doing what the director told them. Mm. So I like to use, you know, really good people and Nikki and Nathan are wonderful and, um, yeah, and a young lady called Hannah Tulip is going to play Elaine Robinson. She's terrific uh, new talent. And of course, you know, the, the, the rule that Mrs Robinson has is you can have me but never have my daughter. And initially, Benjamin doesn't want to know about Elaine and then he realises that he does. Well, then so we he does can't tell the end. Well, he we? does exactly what she doesn't want to do. <laughs> and, and if you think you know the story, a hell of a lot more happens after that. But he basically, as he grows up, he realises he has to stand up, grow a set and, and do what he well, wants to do Well, it certainly made, a, yeah, made yeah. a star of Dustin Hoffman. Oh. You know, before um, that, he had just done bit parts and whatever. Well, that's but here's, right, yeah. well, here's the amazing Maybe thing. Iconic. Well, there's supposed to be quite an age gap between Benjamin and Mrs. Robinson, obviously. Mm. But it turned out there was only six years between Dustin Hoffman oh, and Catherine and, and Bancroft, sorry. And the, yeah. there's no one would believe that, but there was only six years in age difference wow. between them. She had that mature look and he was short. And that usually takes age off, you know, when it, yeah. especially for the well, stage. The, the show is playing here in South Australia yes. at the Holden Street Theatre. That's right. Is there any chance that you would tour that around the rest of the country? Or do you have associations with people that you can sort of lock into? <sighs> the, the problem with that is, is that usually the cast is too big. So there's a cast of like 10. Mm. But I... Having mentioned that, as you open that door, um, I'm doing a show for The Fringe called Married at First Fight. Okay. And <laughs> Sounds interesting. <laughs> well, based on Married at First Sight, the most popular show on television yep. for the last two years, and I'm looking at How taking that to the great. Melbourne Comedy Festival next okay. year. Oh, so. wow. Great. Okay. I want at least people in the other yes, states well, can see yeah, some can, of your so. work. Yeah. Absolutely. In Melbourne. Matthew, thank you for mm. being a regular guest, but stay oh. with us for a moment. Yes, absolutely. We'll be back to say goodbye in just a tick. having a chat about two completely different subjects. We tend to do that sometimes. We do tend to do that. So Matthew... We like variety. <laughs> <laughs> How can people find out more about The Graduate? Well, um, mattburnmedia.com.au with a Y-R-N-E and we run from October 10th to October 27th, Holden Street Theatres next to the Cooper Stadium there, wonderful venue off street and on parking and mm. lovely bar and a great show called The Graduate. <laughs> There's a wrap up for you. Yes. Heather, listening to the program 
that's on. It's on how often? It's the first Friday of every month mm -hmm. on WOW FM, which is 100.5 on the FM dial. On your radio. Yes, yeah. and Seeds of Affinity. If you'd like to support their work, you can Google them and they've got a website. And the information is all there yeah. to make all of that make perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's commendable uh, for two completely different areas, from an entertainment, yeah. but also, Matthew, for what you're giving back to the community here because it's a good opportunity for people to find out um, if they can do yeah. be a performer. Well, most they people, yeah. most people can. I mean, I will say that most people look up auditions, go, try yeah. and be part of it. If It'd you've be got an interest what you can in, do. Yeah. absolutely. But yeah. there's not too much around, really, where new talent can actually um, start. I, well, I guess career. so. But these days, it's all changed because universities now have courses that move people mm. forward. And yeah. I guess in the professional world, you're looking more in that sort of area. But there's people that haven't gone through that. And Heather, I guess the same thing applies in your situation, doesn't yeah. it? Well, it's the beauty of community television and community radio that there's an opportunity for people to get involved in mm. media that they wouldn't ever otherwise get a mm. platform. Yeah, That's and right. of course we're, we're on Facebook, lucky. Airtime TV, if you'd like to catch up with any past episodes, and we'd love you to do that. Janice, it's time for us to go. Yes, it is. Take care. Keep yourself nice till next time we meet. Bye.